Hi there, Elevated Planet community. This is John Drew here from Elevated Planet. And Jolie Gabrielle, also from Elevated Planet. And today we have something in store for you, really an empowerment sort of show that John is going to give us a little more details about. Yeah, thank you, Jolie. Yeah, it's uh, this is going to be good, um, exciting stuff, because this is all about zero point energy, the vacuum field energy. We've covered this kind of stuff before. But this is an interesting take on it because this is Nazim Harimin, who is, you know, this uh, Swiss physicist who has been delving deep. And he's he's a good friend of Greg Braden as well. So it was Greg's interview with Nazim. Um, and there's so much stuff going on, which is really worth knowing about now, because from a humanity perspective, this is going to take us forward in leaps and bounds to that place of unspeakable beauty, which, as we know, is our ultimate destination here at Elevated Planet. So, Jolie, what do you reckon? Should we just dive straight in and, and uh, get that first little section going? Absolutely. Let's do it. Cool. All right. So bear with me a second. So what I'd like mm -hmm. to do, I, one of the first questions that people always ask is, how is it possible to derive energy from what we used to think of as, as empty space. And if it actually is a misnomer uh, in the question, meaning that there is no such thing that we've been able to observe as empty space. Nothing like that has ever been found. And we've looked um, like, if, for instance, if you think of the largest vacuum we know of, for instance, the space between galaxies, even in that space, you find there's particles every few centimeters, right? So it's, so it's actually quite full. If you were to look at the quantum space, right? Like the space in the atom, for instance, where the atom is made out of 99.9999% space. So like all of your reality, all of the things you call things are actually made out of space. Well, when you look at that space, it's not empty at all. It's full of energy. It's full of fluctuation, electromagnetic fluctuation. So the concept of empty space is really not adequate. Um, it, it really doesn't exist. And uh, it might be hard for people to visualize. So like, let me give you an example. Like the space around you right now is full of electromagnetic fields. There's radio waves, there's microwaves, there's ultraviolet, there's infrared. There's even background radiation from the so-called Big Bang. There's, uh, there's radiation from the galaxy we're in. There's radiation from all kinds of different sources. And so actually the space we're in is full of energy and we discovered these energies throughout history we didn't know they were there earlier on and basically we use these energies we use these different electromagnetic waves to transmit information and to transmit power in some cases and so on and so it really is not unusual to think that there is energy in space in the space now the difference is that this source of energy we're discussing is actually a source of energy that comes from the most fundamental fluctuation of creation like it's quantum fluctuation it's energy it's wavelengths that are so teeny they're smaller than the atom itself. They're smaller than the nuclei of the atom. They're really teeny fluctuations in the structure of the vacuum. But because they're teeny, there's a lot of them and they're really energetic. And so when you calculate how much energy there is in the quantum vacuum, in the space, in like the quantum structure or in the atom or in the proton or whatever you find that it's huge so it really is a matter of understanding that energy and understanding how to tap into it and that actually is not that hard i've heard you share statistics in the past there's enough energy 
in a cubic centimeter. It's about the size of a sugar cube. What could we power with the energy that's in that cubic centimeter? We could power all of our planet for millions and millions and millions of years. And we don't need to tap all of the energy that's in a centimeter cube of space. If we have an efficiency of a billionth of a percent of what's there, we, we can power everything we need for eternity. And, and I want to mention as well, it's not just about power. It's about our capacity as well to manipulate or control gravitational field because with this level of power comes the capacity to curve space-time and create warp drives and so on, which that might sound really out there, but there's sections of NASA working on this right now um, and so on. So, I mean, there is uh, serious science being done in that field. Yeah, well, I, and that ties directly into to the next question I wanted to ask. One of the pathways to revealing new discoveries, whether it comes to energy or healing or, you know, so many of the things we've talked about, was in the past. Ancient people didn't only just know about it. And, and I want to make clear that they said they got this information from very advanced gods that came to the earth and all this stuff. But as well, they yeah. knew that it had some geometric component to it, a symbolism that you could express that actually described the workings of this energy and how it coheres how it comes self-organized to produce matter and the forces of nature and the constants of the of nature and so on. And the first time I met you, you start to pull out some symbology from ancient civilization and crop circles as well and all kinds of cool stuff that is like, oh, wow, I, I just loved it. And uh, it kind of launched me on trying to like see the relationship between these symbols and advanced physics and eventually i wrote physics that just actually recently in the paper i'm writing right now kind of linked back up to some of these ancient symbols like in an amazing way and i, I didn't do it on purpose it just it, the equations just led to this and it unifies the forces of nature it, uh, it gives an explanation for all of matter production, including stars and galaxies and so on. Like it explains the scales. So all scales, all forces and all constants all unify under this geometric understanding of this fundamental structure of space. We pause for our first break, you know, and the first question obviously is like, how is it possible to create energy out of nothing, which appears to be empty space? And then we find out there is no such thing as empty space. There is so much going on in the, the tiniest, tiniest of places. And, you know, over the last century, we've discovered things like, you know, radio waves, microwaves and all these other waves that were also mentioned. So it's really not that surprising that there's something even smaller than that. And, you know, even you know, more accessible than that, that we can use to power things. And, you know, this is invisible energy, invisible energy. We are using it every day anyway. But it seems that when you want to think big, you've got to think small, really small. So once you go into this thing, which is smaller than an atom, smaller than the nucleus of an atom, and you've got all these lively little components out there, and that is where this energy comes from. And it's amazing to think that, you know, the energy, the power of a, the size of a sugar cube could power everything on the planet for eternity. And, you know, he, he makes the point that, you know, which is something, again, we've talked about this when we did our series last year, which was all about how to reprogram our subconscious mind, we were talking then about the fact that we are, in effect, 99.9999% empty space. Well, I was last time I looked anyway. And it's kind of one of those things you, you kind of, we think we're solid, right? 
you know, but when you think that 0.0001% of us is particle and everything else is empty space, it's amazing. But that's that's how it works. And everything around us has a similar level of density or lack of density. So, you know, it, it, it's so much different. It's so different to the way we look at the world, to all these things that are going on in the background. And once you start to, to, to look at this stuff and you talk about as well, curving space time to access, you know, it, this, this is one of the things that Nassim uh, Harimin has, has, has discovered in recent times is the accessing anti-gravity technology. And that is one of the things that NASA are also looking at, albeit it is understood through many quarters that in 1956, I think it was at the US Naval Laboratories, that they did actually crack the anti-gravity thing at that point in time. It's just been suppressed for the last 60 to 70 years, purely because, you know, stuff gets weaponized. They get discovered, they get weaponized. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way things have been. Unfortunately, that is the way it's been in the past. It's not going to be the way it's going to continue in the future. And I'm very confident about that because we are heading to our place to our world of uh, unspeakable beauty. And you don't get that when you're sort of like uh, weaponizing things and and, uh, and and holding secrets against each other. Um, now, ancient civilizations have already understood all of this. And I know, again, digging back into my work that I've done in the ancient sites in Egypt and pyramids and stuff. And, you know, I mean, I, I've been doing this for six years now. The likes of Greg Braden, the likes of Nazim Harriman have been doing this for four decades and have been steeped in it for a long time. So, you know, what they know, uh, you know, I, I'm just catching up. I'm just catching up is all I'm doing. And I know that I all I know is the, 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 the tip of the iceberg, but it's fascinating stuff because we know that in the pyramids there are, um, I, as he said, there's, there's stuff there, there's sacred geometry, there's symbolism. Uh, that shows that they understood these concepts thousands of years ago. Um, and we're now just rediscovering them. We think that we're on the leading edge of technology, the most advanced civilization that there's ever been on this planet. Uh, that's not the case at all. And all this comes to unifying the forces of nature, explaining all of the matter production. And that is so important because if we can tap into what this matter production is really all about, then, you know, we are going to be able to manifest things uh, in a way that really will help mankind significantly. And certainly I know in, in part two and part three of this uh, video, it goes deeper into that. Uh, but at that point in time, this point in time, I think, Jolie, would you care to give us your thoughts on this? John, I think you summed it up nicely. And this is such to me great news because it's empowering to know that there is space within all of it that you can work with to sort of turn back the clock, you know, the illness, you know, change the direction your life is going in. These this sort of knowledge and wisdom is very pivotal in helping us build a skill set to change or to growth and positivity so i i just think it's fantastic wonderful wonderful okay thank you so let's go straight into part two that first meeting that we had i had just come back from my first trip uh, to egypt and we had the opportunity to to go into a few temple sites that had only been recently opened uh, during during that time and uh, that's where we found mm -hmm. the, the what we now call sacred geometry, the flower of life certainly was was etched into some of the temple walls, as well as what we now recognize as circuit diagrams. The Egyptologists thought they were just patterns. They were just uh, designs, pretty patterns. And we had engineers with us that recognize, recognize them as, as circuit diagrams. And, you know, one of the things that, that was so fascinating to me when I was there the very first time in Saqqara, for example, is that the records show that when Napoleon's army opened one of the temples underground in Saqqara, it was underground, but it was completely illuminated by spheres that were sitting on pedestals that were just glowing light and apparently had been for a couple of thousand years. 
And uh, so my question, I said, well, where are those spheres? And then what, what the records show is uh, when Napoleon's army went in with the horses, the horses knocked these things over and they broke all of the spheres. But it, it's believed that there was some uh, a gas that had been created based on the principles we're talking about now in resonance with forces from the earth that were allowing this perpetual glow. And that was just one example of, you know, where it's clear that they had some technology thousands of years ago that we're only beginning to understand. I think the word you just used, uh, resonance, I think is a really, really important part of understanding this energy and the creation of matter and how to extract energy from this source and um, how to become resonant, sympathetically resonant to the rest of the universe. Yeah, well, absolutely. This is just what I was going to say, because all of the discoveries you're making, Nassim, and I'm, I'm only aware of, uh, of some of them. I know you've made new discoveries recently that you and I haven't even had the opportunity to, to talk about yet. But what's so fascinating to me is all the things you're discovering about our universe apply to us as biological beings because we are the field and we are uh, subject to all of the principles, the holographic principle, the entanglement, the fractal principles, all the resonant principles. So you're not only discovering ways that we can improve our technological lives, but you are by default, discovering ways that we can improve our, our everyday lives, our health, our healing, our emotional health, our psychological health, certainly our physiological health. And those applications, I think, are just as exciting as, as the potential for bringing a form of energy to the people of this earth that free them from the bonds and from the shackles of the greed and the fear that has limited humankind for thousands of years. And, and I, I believe that's precisely what these kinds of discoveries uh, are doing and have the potential to do to an even greater degree. My last question, Nassim, where are we in terms of bringing these discoveries into our lives locally, what some people would say on a commercial basis in terms of, of uh, and I, I don't know that it needs necessarily replace everything that we have now, but certainly to uh, support and supplement the kinds of energy that, that we have in the world now. There's actually quite a bit of publicity about this right now, and because there's other people uh, like us that are working on this. Stephen Greer is one of them and so on. There is technical developments of these technologies that have been successful all around the world at different times of history, going at least all the way back to Tesla and others at the time and, and forward as well. Um, there's multiple inventors and scientists that have been successful at extracting some of that energy. And I, I would even uh, venture to say that the early tests that were successful with uh, what was called at the time cold fusion were some of the first experiment that supported the extraction of this energy. Interestingly, it was poo pooed at the time, but and it was it was crashed by by hot fusion guys. Uh, but currently, there's international scientific meetings that are occurring in Europe that is sponsored by most of the countries in Europe in the development of that very technology. It's no longer, you know, a fringe scientific venture to reproduce these, these technology. And some of them have been reproduced very successfully and are about to be mm. launched in some countries. I think we're actually really, really close. And certainly we're arriving at a place in our history where we have to transcend the way we've been producing energy and using energy. Uh, and that this transition is difficult, not because there's not the technological know-how, but because there is a problem with the financial and political and international, you know, military industrial complex and so on that is creating some large difficulties in, in bringing this to bear and to market. So 
you know, it really is up to the population and to us to like make the difference uh, and and to bring that to bear. Um, and, and so it really is our level of interest, our level of education and, you know, understanding the transformation that this will bring to humanity. Like you said, it's not just energy powering our cars and houses and all this, but this is energy that's at the base of creation that's at the base of life itself and it can have huge impact on health and uh, life extension and and our capacity to uh, travel in this in the universe uh, in our solar system in our galaxy and so on and and so it really is a critical turn that we're, you know, very nexus point in humanity's evolution right now to bring that forward. And the problem is, again, is not a technical or scientific problem. It's uh, being able to overcome the inertia of earlier technologies that are still hanging on to uh, continue to dominate markets. Right. So, yeah, that again, interesting. I mentioned before, but, you know, in the Egyptian temples, the sacred geometry and the circuit diagrams. I mean, the question is, how could they know what circuit diagrams would look like when we think of those ancient civilizations as not really understanding that kind of thing? But it's there. It's there. It's etched into the stone. And then there's an interesting one. He mentioned about you know, the, when they broke into, uh, this is one of the things that Greg said, when they did their first uh, discovery, said that one of the ones that Napoleon went into with his troops into one of these ancient temples that he they opened up for the first time, and they discovered all this natural illumination within the temple itself, these orbs, um, but they all got knocked off and broken by, you know, uh, the, the troops going in there. But this is, you know, I have I've read a lot about this over the years. Uh, if you think about Atlantis, and I know Atlantis is this legend, if you like, but in reality, Atlantis definitely existed. And they had so much technology that we are, you know, we are nowhere near that yet. But one of the things I know that when they constructed properties, they could do it and actually have the walls uh, would be able to glow at whatever level of illumination they were actually looking for so it was kind of one of those things that you know the orb thing is not a surprise to me that they were able to do that because that is technology and not a knowledge that came from the times of atlantis and also i know in a lot of the other ancient sites as well there have been other similar types of orbs have been discovered there as well and there's you know they're, they're not plugged into anything there's no battery there's no uh, but, you know, that that's what they do. And it just shows there is so much out there yet that we have yet to uncover. And basically, one of the points, again, that was made was about freeing ourselves from the limitations created by greed and fear. And I think that's a really big thing, because I, I do think we still we see so much of this in the world. It's the way that the the population is controlled by whatever you're going to call it. You know, that some people call it the cabal. Some people, uh, you know, there's, there's, there are so many names for these controlling interests, these, these puppet masters, if you like, who control the population. And we've lived within this for thousands of years, so we don't even know we're being controlled. So it doesn't feel like it, but the reality is that life can be and will be so much better than it is now because uh, this, this manipulation of, of, of fear uh, in order to, to gain control and division energy and, and pitting ourselves against each other is is kind of part of the way of control this is what's going to come to light over these next few years the secrets are coming to the surface uh, are being illuminated for us all to to kind of you know take a look at it and take whatever action is necessary and certainly Stephen Greer's work to overcome resistance to get these discoveries out to mankind. What's been amazing about it is he's done a fantastic job of it over 30 years now. And yet the mainstream media continue to ignore what is the biggest story that's been out there for hundreds of years, because it just tells you the mainstream media is under the control of 
these certain entities who do the controlling because they're the ones who are putting the fear stories out there all the time. So this is what Nazim and Greg are both doing. They do it in a more understated way, I think, to do it in a way which is subtle and yet brings change to humanity. And, and none of this, you know, this zero point energy, this vacuum field energy, Tesla discovered this 100 years ago. And as as the Nazim himself said, there were many others over the last century who discovered the same thing and actually were very successful at tapping into this energy field. And yet they were met with all sorts of subterfuge and ruthless suppression. A lot of people died taking this secret to the grave with them because they were not allowed to bring these things forward. So 100 years on, things are changing. Advancements are happening. But it does come back to we the people, not popular as we call it, to ensure these changes are brought forward and not buried once again. But I, you know, I totally believe a transformation for humanity awaits. So it's going to be exciting. It is so much to look forward to. Um, but again, don't buy into the narrative that you are going to be fed by the mainstream media because they want people in fear. That keeps them small. Joe Lay. Can I bring you in to give uh, your thoughts on this? Absolutely. I think it's really important to highlight the fact that it really starts within us. And we're going to see, you know, going into a little bit more detail with that. But our job in order for us, those that want to bring peace to the world, those that want to bring joy and affect change, it starts within always, you know. And so all that empty space that's within us. Let's start the work there. And from there, it, it resonates. Trust. It'll resonate out from you. And then what will happen is you'll be like, bing, bing, bing. I am now aligning and resonating with the laws of the universe. Because that's the whole point of remembering. So that you can lock in and then you can begin to accept the blessings that come in from the ether as well as nature, your fellow man. And that's what our ancestors had in their corner pocket, so to speak, was their connection, the, their knowledge of the connection that they had with their environment and the world around them. And then they were able to go about manipulating some of that environment for their benefit, right? And that remembering was not about greed, you know, not about competition. It was about sharing. And you can tell as, as time went on, those who were the keepers of this flame, you know, decided that we're just going to keep it for ourselves now. So it's about all of us critically understanding at a level, critical mass, right, that we're all interconnected, being compassionate and loving to one another so that then the floodgates open and now all that knowledge can come back into our hands. But first and foremost, we have to learn to love and to spread joy. And mm. that, those are like the, um, I guess you call the things of creation, you know, the bones of creation. And you, I was thinking about this the other day. I have two children and I really sat down and I thought about that. That is magic. Think about it. You have this sperm and this egg that come together, that spark. And then now this woman's body is creating ligaments, is creating tissues, is creating bones. You have created... You're a woman, your body has created bones. You have created a baby, but yet and still you have arthritis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. think about it logically for a second. I just created two beings out of my body. We don't, we don't ever, I mean, we do it so much that the magic disappears, right? It becomes like, that's why they call us, what do they call us? Like a profane or, or, you know, because we just don't realize the power that we possess. Just that alone, the feminine power is a manifestation of how much energy and power you have to create, period. And I understand, I, I'm not, I know I'm not speaking to everybody, but the, the essence of that is there in every being. Mm. So let's try to expand on that in more ways than just sex and intimacy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And making that, I mean, if you can do that, imagine what else you can do outside, you know? So, okay, that's my contribution to this section. <laughs> yeah, no, brilliant. Um, you know, it, there's no doubt about it. It's the power we have within 
it, it is miraculous, right? And I think this yeah. is what we're going to discover is more and more miracles or what we think of as miracles. But in reality, we're starting mm -hmm. to understand the science behind this that kind of take it out of that miraculous kind of thing and say, actually, we understand from a physics point of view, from a scientific point of view, why we can do this, because this is understanding what creation is all about. And as you say, the bones of creation, the bones of deliberate creation is the important yeah. thing, right? Because, right. <laughs> you know, we can be unconscious creators, but better still yeah. to be conscious creators. That's correct. And what's so exciting about today's is that we're going to kind of peek into how to become conscious creators through a creative visualization. So. Cool. Wonderful. Right. Okay. We're going to go into the final section of this particular video. Wow. This is so exciting to, to hear this, Nassim, and I appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, I think one of the things that I certainly have recognized as a scientist going to the, uh, the scientific conferences and, and in the scientific papers is there is an openness and a willingness to accept these concepts more so now than there was when you and I were meeting in certainly in Taos, New Mexico 30 years ago. But one of the things that has changed is that the yeah. energy companies, the oil companies now are actually supporting this technology. Some of them are. And, and the reason is fascinating because they are now recognizing that petroleum products uh, oil is one of the compounds that we cannot synthetically reproduce from nothing. So what that means is the oil that we have is so precious. Once it's gone, it's gone, and we have to stop burning it so that we can still continue to use it to create the computers that we're talking on right now and all the medical supplies and the medical equipments. And, you know, there are 6,000 applications in each of our lives every day where fossil fuels are involved and people don't realize that. So it, it is so precious that we need to stop burning it and go to these alternatives mm -hmm. and the oil. It's not about putting the energy companies out of business. Uh, although, you know, I mean, some people think that that's, that's what's happening, but it's the recognition that we're at a point in our civilization where we need the, the oil as a resource uh, in the technology and that we can create energy in other ways without destroying that that finite resource so that's uh, for me that's yeah, very exciting only, so, yeah 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 not only not destroy the environment but actually rejuvenate the the environment because uh, that having an almost infinite amount of energy available to us would allow us to greenify deserts and you know purify water and and so on I, like this all kinds of application in which our world could really be thriving as a result yeah well and and it would also free the innovation and the creativity and the imagination of so much of our global family who has been sidelined uh, in those endeavors because uh, because they don't have access to the kind of energy that we're talking about. So it would unleash mm -hmm. the the creative forces of our uh, human intellect and imagination in ways that we've never seen. Most relevant to, to the people that are listening right now is to become aware of this energy within themselves and to start you know interacting with it consciously because it's not only in the space outside of you it's in the space mm -hmm. inside of you which is 99.999999% yeah. space again and and so you know to actually start to feel it and to be architects of it you know to be engineers of your vacuum energy uh, and to direct it to help your health, your your awareness, your consciousness and everything. I think that's really uh, important. And just to do that, even five minutes a day, uh, every day would make a huge difference because we're all connected through this energy and everybody that becomes better at channeling it is is making a difference, a, a huge difference. Okay, so that final section there.
a new willingness from some of the energy companies to encourage and not suppress these changes the the you know the zero point energy because that's part of the story of the last century has been the suppression of this fuel which should have been around we we, we haven't needed fossil fuels for many decades so you think about the environmental damage that has been done that unnecessarily, and we will know this in time. I know that at this point, most people won't get that, but it's, that's the way people will, I'm convinced, will come to realize over time. But we will need fossil fuels as well, because, and it must exist in harmony with the, the quantum vacuum energy that uh, Nazim is talking about, because you know, there are other applications other than burning. Right. There are creation things that, that are actually positive for living our lives. And it's interesting what Nazim said about rejuvenating our environment um, and that the deserts will bloom again once more, because that actually came from the book of Isaiah um, the the Dead Sea Scrolls. The first one that was discovered was the, the Isaiah scroll, which was the most complete, which included, I think, the, old, the oldest version of the Old Testament that is known today. And that was where he said there was going to come a time of great conflict. And there were, and there were two outcomes that were outlined within that. One was a very destructive image. We'll just put it at that. And the other one was where uh, the deserts will bloom, springs will come forth, everything will start to be in harmony. And it's interesting because we look at the new earth. What has been said is that there is a split and there is uh, those who will carry on to the new earth because they are ready for higher dimensional energies. Those emotions that we've talked about before, which is all about love and joy, kindness, compassion and all that kind of thing. Uh, but those who are not ready for it, who may be stuck in fear, um, they need to stay with a 3D version of the earth. And this is kind of things when you see these ancient texts, it's all laid out within those texts. So it's fascinating stuff when you kind of stop and think about it, because this this was written thousands of years ago. for what appears to be the modern era that we are living in today. So we shall see. We have choices. We have choices and we're going for that world of unspeakable beauty come and join us. We have so much more control than we've been led to believe. So we're consciously interacting within the field within ourselves truly empowers us because if we are 99.9999% energy waves and only 0.0001% particle, we have the field within ourselves and we can tap into that field. And as Nazim says, five minutes focus a day a kind of meditative focus will make a huge difference. We are all connected. To me, I'm just learning more and more about this stuff, and I just get so excited about it. Uh, Jolie, what do you think? I think it's brilliant. I think I'm, I'm so glad that this stuff is going mainstream because for those of you that are really depressed and anxious and you don't know a way out, let's say, and you're you're working a corporate job and you're living from paycheck to paycheck, and you know that there's more to life than this, right? And you're sitting there, but you don't know how, and you don't know what, and you don't know where to begin. It's like just knowing that there is a possibility that you can do more than what you're doing and to find that within you and do the work is amazing. And I think what Braden Dispenza Haramenian is telling you is that slow down, stop, and look within and work with your own energy. Like the reason you feel that way is because you're not tapping into all of that energy that is there. We've decided the well-worn path, which is where we wanna go. And therefore we're suppressing our energy and our potentiality dies because we don't realize what we are made of. And I'm not saying that environment is bad, but imagine if you can go into that environment knowing who you are and spread joy and that joy reverberates and you're able to push back that negative energy. But right now you're sitting in the center of a place that is pulling that emptiness or that, that, that space that's not empty, they're pulling it from you and using it to, for their benefit, for their abundance, instead of you being able to say, uh-uh, I will give you this you know, for my paycheck, but you can't have all the rest of this, right? 
So that's what we're here to learn how to do is just to empower ourselves, keep our energy and know that wherever we go, we carry joy. Brilliant. Yeah, that made sense. It does make sense. And, you know, I yeah. think that's a perfect lead into um, Dr. Bruce Lipton, our cellular uh, biologist uh, scientist uh, of many of about 50 years I mean the man's a genius I love what he does but we have a one minute clip don't we which talks to the importance of that emotional energy with our health and everything like that exactly as you're describing it okay so so Nazim uh, did a fantastic job of, of explaining to us about you know how we can empower ourselves because we're all energy waves with a very small fraction of particle um, but when you kind of look and see what uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton is talking about here, it kind of really tells you how much power we have to create our own health and well-being. People say, OK, Bruce, you're studying cells in a plastic Petri dish. What does that have to do with me? It doesn't make a difference to the cell if it's in a plastic dish or a skin dish. It still responds to environmental signals. So. The environment is controlling the cells. But between the environment and the cells is the mind. And that does interpretation. If you open your eyes and see someone you love, your mind interprets love. And you release beautiful chemicals. Dopamine for pleasure. Oxytocin for bonding. If I take the chemicals from brain that perceives love and put them into a plastic Petri dish, the cells grow beautifully. If I take the chemicals from a brain that perceives fear, the cells stop growing and they start dying. So you're the one whose thoughts change the chemistry and the chemistry controls the genetics. So all of a sudden, you're not a victim of your genes. You're the master of your genes. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's so empowering that mm -hmm. you know we have that level of control. But the problem is, we, you know, we're encouraged into fear, right? We're encouraged to 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 into division energy and to uh, you know to to worry about wars and and see all the the negativity going on among uh, around us because it's presented to us all the time. But that's not doing us any favors. We have to take control of that to become master of our molecules. Absolutely, and um, it takes. What it, well, I think where we go wrong, and I can speak from personal experience, is consistency. You know, five minutes a day is what uh, Dr. Haramini, Haramini said. And sometimes we don't even do that. But you would imagine five minutes a day, three times a day, you're really cooking with gas. And anyone knows, we, we hear about um, Alexander Graham Bell or all of these amazing Edison, how many times did they fail? Did they fail? Did they fail before they figured it out? So it's about continuing to visualize and trust the universe, not hope. Hope is something that's in a whole different ball game. That means that you're not believing. You don't really have faith at all. You're just praying for something and not putting in the work. When you trust, you put in that work. So what's that work? Visualizing yourself connecting. And so we're going to go through a visualization today that's going to kind of re-empower us to take back that space or that energy within the cells. And mm -hmm. so first, we need to kind of know what, have a visual. I kind of want to give us a visual of what we're going to be seeing when we close our eyes and listen to, to the words that are being said. I want you to see your blood I want you to look at this and just let it sit in your mind because I want you to see this coming into your blood cells, the gold light, the gold light of love and joy taking out and you taking back the space. And on the inside, we're also going to see ourselves as captain of each and every cell of the ship of each one of those little minute atoms and cells within our bodies. So this is a visual I want you to see, but we're going to turn it heart shaped, right? And fill it with gold. For those of you that say, hey, I don't necessarily know if I want love and joy. I just want to be open to what the universe brings me. Then you can see the energy as sort of clear or neutral, like water or an etheric plasma that is pouring through the crown so that you can allow for the universe to populate that with whatever color 
or your experiences. But for those of you that want to really heal and move into a state of love and joy and align with the laws of the universe, gold light is where it's at. So take a deep breath in and exhale. Move your sit bones around if you're sitting down and really bear down and into your seat. Ground your energy, put your feet flat on the floor. Your palms face up as you breathe with the rhythm of your body and bring your awareness to your chest. Command your heartbeat to sync up with your breath. And now move your awareness down to between your sit bones and ground your energy with the grounding cord that is of a natural earth element and six inches in diameter, connected to very securely your first chakra. See this beautiful essence of mother earth move through the crust, through the lithosphere, traveling at the speed of light through the athenosphere and rooting into mother earth as the roots hug hug her you know like yes i'm here i love you thank you for all your blessings and all of the nurturing energy you can send i accept it's that hug and so now we're going to blanket the inside and the outside of our grounding cord with golden rose shaped scrubbing bubbles as we clean off any energy that no longer serves us anything we're ready to let go of and release especially the fear as we then simultaneously put a golden sun above our head in this golden sun we're putting love and joy just make it simple or for those of you that want that clear energy of the sun. You can put on top of that or inside positive possibilities, positive future possibilities. You bring that golden sun down and you allow it to sit in the heart and expand out, bringing all your energy back to you. And then the rest cascades down, down the grounding cord, all the way into mother earth and any excess to her saying thank you and I love you. And all of those golden rose shapes scrubbing bubbles have fallen away into the core and she's turned them into positive creative life force energy for anyone to use. Take a deep breath in, exhale, bring your awareness back to your chest. Take a deep breath in, exhale, bring your awareness now to the center of your head. I'd like for you to please open your crown like you would the lens of a camera. And command etheric earth energy, golden light, etheric cosmic energy, excuse me, and gold light, whichever one to cascade down into the crown. You're visualizing this coming straight down into the heart and filling up each and every individual blood cell. This gold light is just penetrating through them and each one is turning heart shaped. As it moves out of the heart, it moves throughout the body and you see it start to fill you up, starting at your toenails. Each and every single cell in the toenail is turning heart shaped and that space is being filled up with gold light and a little tiny you is the captain of this atom and this ship. As you decide how this space is gonna fill up, Moving into the toes, you've got these atoms and these cells and the bones and the blood cells, and ligaments and muscles moving into the feet, pooling into the feet. This beautiful golden heart-shaped blood cell is filling up all of the atoms. As you're moving through, imagine your body being like a symphony or a sound. And each of these atoms are beginning to connect with each other so they can play the song of optimal health, of love, of joy, of abundance as it moves up to your ankles. You're rearranging yourself to optimal health and you're moving out the fear. You're annihilating that. And these new cells 
heart shapes filled with gold, neutral energy or love and joy is filling up your body all the way up to your knees now, every cell in the bone and the ligaments, all of this space is being filled up with you. You are now commanding and dictating optimal health, love and joy and abundance to fill up each and every cell that you are captaining, taking back your power and your energy. All of the negativity, all of the fear is moving out and down the grounding cord. It's finding its way out of your body or it is being extinguished and filled up with these new heart-shaped, gold-filled cells that you are the captain of. Every single space within the space of these atoms is yours as this moves up into the hips, all the bones, the sacrum, the coccyx, moving up and down the spine as it then begins to move into the nerves and your nervous system takes on the energy. This beautiful heart-shaped, gold-filled, atom and cells are moving throughout the body up into the colon reproductive organs and into the stomach all the way up moving up into the rib cage the lungs the heart i want you to see visualize see those cells heart shaped with that gold light just i mean just bursting forth from it as it's up in the heart now there's a critical mass happening as this energy moves up bifurcates comes down into those fingernails moving their way up the phalanges let's take a minute and let's see ourselves feel ourselves with these new cells heart shaped filled with gold love and joy energy neutrality bursting through every cell so that these cells are resonating and connecting with one another we moving out disease and illness and what doesn't resonate or have a frequency of love and joy or neutrality is beginning to move out our body and down our grounding cord as these cells are now up into the brain, the cranium, <laughs> rewiring our snapses, rewiring the brain for love and joy and support and optimal health and abundance, especially that calcified pituitary gland is beginning to just uncalcify and soften all of that concretized material that comes in through the fluoride and through the unhealthy pollutants in our environment have been resolved and dissolved at our command as these atoms and these cells are filled with this beautiful golden heart-shaped atoms and cells infiltrating the DNA and allowing for any of that disease and illness there to be moved up and out, down the grounding cord or up into the ether, turned into positive creative life force energy for anyone to use. So now see yourself as this energy moves out into the aura layer, you are like this crackling flame of love and joy of just uh, just this beautiful cinder of just love and joy all around you, moving out into your aura layer, magnetizing optimal health, love, joy, neutrality, and positive possibilities, future possibilities from Mother Earth. And make sure this energy saturates your back. Make sure those cells, you see them on the back of you, heart-shaped, filled with gold, all out in the aura layer, get into the back, the muscles, the nerves, the vertebrae, all the way down into that lower back. Make sure in the sacrum and the lumbar, where we have that fear that we really spend some time turning all of these atoms and these cells into this beautiful heart-shaped, golden, burning flame of love and joy you know, excited for what our day is about and what our future holds. Moving into a place where we bring joy and love to all of those around us, to where our energy just lights up and feeds and nurtures our environment. Underscored with gratitude and forgiveness, resilience, all of ourselves right now are in symphonic resonance with one another playing a song 
of love and joy, playing a song of trust in the positive possibilities <laughs> of unspeakable beauty happening in our lives and in the lives of others out into our environment and into our universe. Hold the space as you breathe in, exhale, relax. As you breathe in, you exhale, you relax. You breathe in and you exhale and you relax knowing that you are worthy and deserving and accepting all of these blessings that the ancients and your ancestors are bestowing upon you so that you remember who you are. The golden being of light here to spread love and joy to your environment and connect as all of these cells in your body and in your aura play a symphony of optimal health, love and joy, and abundance. Hold the space, breathe in, exhale. Close your crown like you would the lens of a camera. Stay grounded. Take a deep breath in, exhale. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Beautiful. I love the idea of being captain of my little cellular ship. Yep. All the space, you're in charge. No one's going to be mining that from you anymore. Mm -mm. You are the captain, and the commander of your own energy and all of the space within the cells of your body. Beautiful. So now go forth and spread joy. Mm. Thank you, Jolie. <laughs> Thank you. So... Okay, well, I think uh, only to say then that uh, any questions that uh, for myself or Jolay, you can direct them through me at John Drew at elevatedplanet.life. The newsletter goes out tomorrow and it will have the recording from this live session. And I just want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, Jolay, any comments you want to share there at the end? No, just gratitude and, and thanks for all of the blessings and the, the viewers that we have. Yeah, truly appreciate it. Truly appreciate our community and feel free to spread the joy across all the so social media networks or wherever else you want to share this. We're coming together to create our world of unspeakable beauty. And actually, we're kind of getting there very, very soon. So till next week, love and light and be back to you soon.